As we mentioned in the previous video, our track is complete, and so what we want to do now is actually apply this to the stabilization of the position of this frame. So you'll notice, for, for one thing, before we do that, that I want to point out that we're just tracking position, and we're doing a stabilized track. Now there's a rotation and a scale function here that we'll take a look at it just a little bit later on, but for right now, all you really need to know is that we're tracking just the position of the object in the frame. Now at this point, because we're doing a stabilized, because we've got our track and position, all we really need to do is just click our apply button, and this is, as I mentioned, going to apply the tracker information to the anchor point. Now we could at this point choose to offset just the X or the Y if we wanted to do that, if we wanted to do just horizontal or vertical positioning. But in our case, because we have motion in both directions, we want to apply it to both the X and the Y directions of the anchor point position. So I click OK. And now if I roll this tracker down and I click on our transforms here, you'll see that the anchor point function, the anchor point property, has had a whole ton of keyframes applied to it. And those, in fact, are the same keyframes that we got from the tracker, the feature center of the tracking function that we just did, of that stabilizing track. Now, the center of the feature, of course, is the T-shaped area that we were tracking here. And now, if we take a look at this, you'll see that we've bounced back to the timeline again from the layer window. And if I now just drag through here, you'll see that kind of miraculously, we've just about completely stabilized all that camera motion. And you'll see that it seems like the edge of the frame is kind of sliding around over the place. We're getting this kind of black area because what in fact is happening is that the anchor point of that layer, of that hummingbird layer, is moving around frame by frame. And as it's doing so, it's adjusting the position of the layer relative to the frame. We haven't applied anything to the actual position keyframes, which is good because you'll see why in a second. We're just doing the anchor point. And now if in fact we preview this, let's do a quick RAM preview of this. You see that it looks like almost as if it was a, a locked down shot, but there's sort of weird black bars moving around on the side. And what we're seeing there, of course, is the edge of that video frame that is now being slipped around relative to the edge of the composition frame that we're working with. Now, we didn't get the entire comp there, unfortunately, previewed. We don't have quite enough memory available, but that's okay. Now you can see now that from that very shaky shot that we had before, we actually have a very smooth shot, even with that little bit of a zoom that's in the background. This looks like it's just about been shot with a locked down tripod. Now you see there's a little bit of a, little bit of a wiggle right there, right here which I think may actually be a little bit of a rotation of the camera as opposed to a position, but it's actually pretty good. And that's barely distracting. And on almost every other part of the image, we have a very stable image. Now, of course, we have an image now in which we have a lot of this sort of black stuff happening on the edges, which is really not what we want, of course. So in our next video, what we'll do is compensate for that by repositioning and scaling the frame to get rid of that and focusing right in on our hummingbird. And you'll in fact, let's go right to the very end here before we close this one out and you'll see him fly off there. There we go. All right, in our next video, let's just fix this little problem of the black bars here.